to slickbacks, converse, lowriders, and street art, Chicanos and Chicanas have been there and done that. If you've never seen a Chicano, well, you're looking at one right now. But today, we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about what it means to be filled with Chicano and Chicana pride. In order to do so, we will take a late night cruise at the biggest hotspots for Chicanos. This would be California. At our first stop, we will see how the voices of Mexican Americans influence the history of Chicanos. At our second stop, we will see the fashion of Chicanos. And lastly, at our last stop, we will see the rich culture of Chicanos. Get ready and buckle up because here we go. Our first stop, we will see how it wasn't all rainbows and sunshines at first for Chicanos. According to Carillo, after the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo to end the Mexican-American War in 1848, many Mexicans were promised US citizens, US citizenships, and the property to their land, culture, and language. Unfortunately, this wasn't true for those who immigrated later on and found themselves in regions where the border shifted. Because of this, many Mexican Americans tried to assimilate with the class of white Americans to be treated fairly. Spoiler alert, this didn't work. Don't lose hope though, because this all changed in the 1960s, thanks to two amazing icons, Dolores Yurta and Cesar Chavez, who started the Chicano movement, which turned a racial slur into such a strong meaning. Of course, these two couldn't have done it alone. They had the support from local car clubs and vendors as well. This soon later led to a, a strike for grape workers. Thanks to the skills that Dolores and Caesar had, and Larry as well, a Filipino American, they were able to win several victories for Chicanos because the workers signed contracts with the union. If you're into fashion, look no farther because our next stop will be at a local Chicano clothing shop. If you've ever heard of the term, the baggy aesthetic, this was actually brought by Chicanos, according to Saunders. These were brought by Chicanos who lived in South California and who belong in street gangs. They as well brought high-waisted zo high zoot suits worn by cholos and as well as flannels. Since the style was very eye-catching, eye this drove many industries to be inspired by this look ever since the Mexican repartition of 1929, which is when the US government sent over 2 million Mexican Americans back to their country. Many industries and celebrities did not give credit to these Chicanos because from their style. These include celebrities like Selena Gomez, Rihanna, and Lana Del Rey. Unlike them, who we will give credit to these Chicanos because, because we learned of many. But let's try to learn at least one more. This isn't something exactly you could wear, but more something you could type out. Gothic lettering was brought by Chicanos who lived in LA, California. No matter if you could wear it, style it, or write it, we can see how Chicanos all had a certain style to dress as because they were trying to express who they were and how, how long they came. Yeah. Other from fashion, we can see another way that Chicanos expressed themselves was through culture. A way that Chicanos expressed themselves was through street art. These consisted of vibrant colors to graffiti. Apart from murals and graffiti art, another way that Chicanos expressed themselves was through tattoos, according to a local tattoo shop named Mi Vida Loca. These tattoos consisted of skulls, women, flowers, and even religious figures. If you weren't from the barrio, this probably meant violence. But for Chicanos, this meant loyalty to community, family, friends, and God. Speaking of barrios, what does that mean? Well, barrios were Spanish-speaking communities in low poverty that lived in cities or towns. Another thing widely known about Chicanos is the lowrider community. According to Blanc and Christine, you will be, you'll be able to see the lowrider community at any given event, such as weddings, quinces, and even funerals. Due to the Mexican-American War, Mexicans brought their technical skills into improving their Chevys and Impalas. 
Unfortunately, our late night cruise is coming to an end. But before you get off, let's review how long of a distance we traveled. At our first stop, we got to see the history of Chicanos. At our second stop, we got to see and stay in touch with the styles of Chicanos. And lastly, at our last stop, we got to see the rich culture of Chicanos. Watch your step as you get off because our Impalas do have hydrolocks which can bounce the information you just learned into another dimension. Thank you.